Well, uh, welcome everybody to DOCAS. Uh, today, uh, we have the pleasure to have uh, uh, Luis Narvaez Macarro again from University of Seville, who is going to continue talking about a ring of differential operators and Hashmi's derivations. Yeah. Thank you, Luis. Okay. So, hello, everybody. Thanks again to the organizer for the invitation. So, uh, last time, uh, as uh, probably you remember, I, I used the Blackboard. And finally, the result was not bad, perhaps. Uh, but the problem is that uh, uh, I uh, many many things uh, left uh, without uh, position, and so perhaps today I will try to to uh, to do both things: to use uh, the my screen and the, the Beamer presentation, and also the blackboard. So the first thing I, I am going to do is, uh, uh, let's say, to finish the last talk and uh, very quickly. Uh, so this is only to see that uh, all the construction we usually do with uh, differential forms can be uh, generalized to the case of uh, a Lee Reinhardt algebra. Uh, I suppose I always suppose that. Our Lee Reinhardt algebra is uh, projective of finite rank, uh, constant finite rank over A. Uh, and this is the case when, when we are uh, using the, the module of derivations over something smooth. Um, so, in that case, uh, we define the differential forms. Uh, starting with the lead Reinhardt algebra. This is the opposite uh, sense that we classically do. Uh, and this is in order to avoid some pathological things like uh, what, happen, uh, what happens in the case of uh, formal power series rings, where the module of differential is not finite uh, over the ring. And so it is better to, to work with the derivation and to define the, the differential forms as the dual. So we can we can define the omega l uh, as the dual of our Lee Reinhardt algebra over A, and we define the exterior differential by the by the usual forms. Uh, well, uh, perhaps this the, what you can see in the screen is not the usual form, but but uh, it is a convenient uh, translation of the usual form that uh, make use of the structure of Lee Reinhardt algebra, as you can see here, as you can see, uh, because you, you have to use the, the, the bracket uh, of, uh, of two things. OK, so but this is more or less uh, uh, straightforward. So uh, now once uh, you, you define the, the different omega p over uh, or with respect to L, you can define the Lee derivative and the contraction also in the classical way. And there are some properties, very easy. So this, these are very well-known properties. The Lie derivative is a derivative, is uh, satisfies a Leibniz property. Uh, there is a Leibniz, the second, the second property here is a Leibniz property. This is a property relating the bracket. This is an integrability property. And the last formula uh, uh, tells us that it is not linear with respect to derivation, with respect to lambda. There is a correction term here, uh, which is not zero in general. So uh, these properties, uh, we can, we can, uh, uh, we can <clears throat> say simply that the action of lambda through lead derivatives uh, makes, makes uh, that the omega PL uh, becomes uh, pre-modular structures over L. Why pre-modular structure? Because we cannot leave A to be anything, because we have this correction term. Uh, we need A to be constant. To, to belong to K. In that case, we have all the properties needed to have a left L module structure. Okay. And for, for instance, in the case D, P, excuse me, P equals zero. So we, we are uh, 
uh, we don't have this this uh, um, correction uh, term because uh, the interior product of uh, of, a, of a function is zero. Okay, so in that case, that um, that shows that for p equals zero, but p equals zero is a is the the, the function the the Reno function, and we already knew uh, that uh, that this uh, this is a module over L, but so what happened uh, in the opposite side? What happened if we go to the top differential forms? So to the top differential forms, uh, we we call uh, them omega L. So uh, we can we have the action as always, but we put the action on the right and we change the sign of the lead derivative and we obtain these properties. Uh, but uh, linearity, why in this case we recover linearity with respect to A? And the reason is written in this proof. And essentially what happened is that the, the, the correction term that appear so the difference between both, uh, if you develop what, what happened with this term, you obtain that this term can be written as an alternate form on d plus one derivations. And because we are on top differential forms, any alternate form of d plus one derivation must vanish. And so there is no correction term. And so that gives uh, an L module structure on the right uh, in a canonical way without using coordinates on omega L. Okay, so this is what uh, uh, the last part of my first talk that I couldn't uh, explain last time. And so now I I will I will explain uh, I will give the the second part. Uh, so. In the second part, uh, uh, what I, I, I pretend is to explain how we can use Hasse-Smith derivations to uh, generalize uh, the things I explained before with lee reinhardt algebras. So uh, let's uh, go to the easy case, but important case of polynomial rings. Uh, in this case, uh, suppose that K is an arbitrary commutative ring and you take A, the polynomial ring with a coefficient in K. So in this, in this case, derivation is a free module as always. And everybody knows that in that case, the differential ring, the, 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 the ring of differential operators uh, can be also expressed in a very, uh, let's say, transparent way, uh, because you can you can give an, an explicit base of differential uh, operators as a module, and this uh, the, the this basis this basis uh, I call here delta alpha are what we can think. As uh, you you take the the derivation uh, to the power alpha, and you divide by factorial alpha alpha factorial. Okay, uh, this is the, the 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 way we can think on on these operators, and so uh, they are defined in that way. And what happened, and this is interesting, is but in explicit computation. Split computation means that you take this basis with respect to the coordinates x1, xm, and you see that the graded ring of differential operator is generated by uh, as, a, as an A module by the symbols of these operators. But the problem is this, the, the symbol of this operator are not the variables of uh, a polynomial ring because we have this, uh, this uh, oh, excuse me, we have this, uh, uh, this uh, equality is that the product of uh, uh, xi alpha, xi beta is no, is not 
xi alpha plus beta. There is a, a, a binomial coefficient here. Well, this is well known. Uh, this is something that uh, is well known in for many years. Uh, that this is what we call the power divided algebra over A generated by C1 Cm. This is the power divided algebra. I am not going to, to give the details of this, uh, but well, this is something that in the case where A contains the rationals, the, this power divided algebra coincides with the symmetric algebra. So there is no problem. This is a, a real polynomial ring in C1, Cm. But in general, it's not a polynomial, it's not a polynomial uh, uh, <coughs> uh, ring, uh, but it is a power divided, a free power divided algebra. But uh, this computation is explicit, is easy, but we have to use coordinates in order to, to understand what happened. So the, the question is the following. In the same way that in the general case, in we had a canonical map from the symmetric algebra of derivation to the graded ring of differential operators. Uh, may it it may uh, I mean uh, is there some canonical map from the from the divided power algebra of derivation to the graded uh, ring the associated graded ring of differential operators? Uh, in general, that in the case where our base ring K contains the rationals, it becomes the same canonical map we had last time. So this is this is some an actual question. And in order to to answer this question, uh, we are going to explain what are Hasse-Smith derivations and the, the different construction we can do with with them. So what are has Smith derivations? Uh, well, mm, we start always, we have a base ring K and a, K, a commutative K algebra A. So a Smith derivation of length M is a, uh, is a sequence, is a sequence uh, of operators. Uh, <coughs> of k linear operator in such a way that uh, the zero term is the identity and for the others we have a leibniz a leibniz property okay so uh, it turns out that uh, this property this leibniz property can be expressed in a more compact way because uh, a has smith derivation can be understood as a power series ring, well, uh, this is a real power series ring if m is infinity. If a m is a finite number, uh, this is a truncated power series ring. So this uh, this belongs to a quotient. Okay, but we can we can fix uh, the case m e equal to infinity, and this is a, a real power um, series. So we can think on a has mid derivation as a uh, as a uh, power series with coefficients operators of k, k linear operator of k. Okay, but there is another equivalent way to see differential uh, has mid derivation is as an automorphism of uh, excuse me. This is not k algebras. There is a uh, here. There is a uh, there is something. Uh, excuse me. I can, I can, I can put here. This is not of k algebra. This is of k t m algebras. Okay. So uh, we can we can. <coughs> Uh, we can see a has been derivation in, in three ways as a sequence of operator, as a power series uh, that we can we can think on this power series as the generating uh, series for this sequence, 
And we can see also Hasmi derivation as automorphism uh, of algebras. With uh, we we add some some uh, some variable additional variable t. Okay, actually, uh, and excuse me, uh, and what is important is that Hasmi derivations defined in that way in any of these ways, uh, we can see easily that they form a group. We can compose uh, Hasmi derivation. The, for the explicit formula is that one. Uh, that means that the for the one terms, uh, the composition is just the, 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 the sum of the one terms. And actually, uh, well, this is classical. This notion is, is classical, uh, but uh, we can extend this uh, notion to the multivariate case, and this is useful. We need it. It's less classical, so I will go very quickly because the idea is very simple. Instead of taking, of taking a sequence of the, the operator, d0, d1, we can take a family of operators indexed by element alpha, and this element alpha belongs. In principle, you can you can think that they belong they belong to to n p instead of p one. This was the 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 case of univariate has made derivation. Uh, but uh, if you are interested also in considering not uh, inf in, in, infinite uh, has made derivation uh, partial has made derivation. Instead of taking a number m as before, you take a coideal, a coideal of NP. What is a coideal? A coideal is simply a subset of NP, which is stable by the, the this uh, order ordering relation. Okay, if alpha prime is less or equal than alpha, then an alpha belongs to delta, uh, then alpha prime belongs to delta. So that means. That is that it is. Uh, uh, I don't know how do you say in English. Uh, uh, escalera or escalier, uh, ladder. I don't know. Uh, this is what happened when you are uh, when you are defining uh, Grobner biases and things like that. You obtain something which is what what is uh, below uh, the. <clears throat> Uh, the below uh, part of of uh, of this object is it is a co-ideal, okay. Uh, so this is the complement of the ideal in NP. Uh, so you you define a Hasmi derivation with respect to this data in the same way, exactly in the same way. Everything makes sense, and you obtain uh, a set. The p, the delta variate has a mid derivation, and uh, they they can and they can uh, be understood uh, also a power series or automorphism in the same way that in in the univariate case, and they are again groups, okay? They are again groups uh, in the same way. So this is a definition that it is not classical, but it is exactly uh, uh, a straightforward generalization of the univariate case. So let give let's give uh, the I mean uh, an important notion. What is an integral derivation? Uh, an integral derivation uh, in our K algebra A or a M integrable derivations, derivation is a derivation such that there exists a has Smith derivation. There exists a has Smith derivation D uh, such that the one term, the one component of this has Smith derivation is delta. Okay, so in that case we say that delta is M integrable. And we can say that uh, uh, delta is finite integrable if it is m integrable for all finite m. And we say that it is infinite integrable if there is a infinite uh, has mid derivation 
uh, such that D such that D1 is delta. Okay, so there are different models, but more or less all, all of them are uh, related. Uh, for instance, if our base ring contain uh, the rationals, uh, it is very easy to see that any derivation is uh, infinity integrable because you can form this sequence and you uh, easily uh, uh, check that it, uh, it defines a Hasselmead derivation of length infinity. Okay. Uh, there is another thing that it is uh, interesting. If if you take a, a, an element in 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 A and you take a Hasselmead derivation, you can produce a new Hasselmead derivation in that way. But you need to put a a square a cube. You have to to preserve the homogeneity in some way. Okay, uh, and you can see this property. Uh, I mean this operation perhaps more easily. If you understand a Hasselmead derivation as a power series, because in that way, what you are doing is replacing the variable t by a times t. Okay, so it is perhaps more easy to understand this formula. And by using this, this fact, it is very, it is uh, an exercise. Actually, this is an exercise um, in the book of Matsumura. Uh, that the integral derivations, M, M integral derivations, form a module, a submodule of derivation. So, in that way, we have an interesting sequence uh, with respect to our K algebra. And this is the, the, on the top, on the top, you have all the derivations. Uh, below, you have uh, the infinite derivations, infinite integrable derivation, and in the middle you have this uh, this sequence. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> what happened with integral derivations in depending on our algebra? So the first thing is that if our algebra A is formally smooth over K, for instance. Uh, if A is a power series ring over K, or if A is a polynomial, is a polynomial uh, ring over K, then any Hasmi derivation of any length can be extend can be extended to a Hasmi derivation of infinite length. This is very easy because uh, if you write down what uh, formally smooth uh, uh, means uh, you obtain exactly what you need. So in that case, that means that if we have this smoothness property, uh, all derivations, all derivations are uh, infinity integrable. Okay. Uh, well, here there are some examples. Uh, for instance, for normal crossing divisors. Well, what means formal not a normal crossing divisor? Let's say you take. Uh, a, the quotient of the polynomial ring kx1, xm, divided by the product of some variables. So this is, uh, let's say, for the moment, uh, the meaning in that case of normal crossing divisor. So in that case, uh, you can, it is not formally smooth in that, in that case, but you have this property. You have uh, that the uh, all the derivations are uh, integrable. Infinity integral, actually, and these are mm, some uh, toy examples uh, here for 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 the cusp in characteristic zero and characteristic three, and you see that there are in this uh, sequence I I mentioned I mentioned uh, before there are uh, two strict uh, Inclusions and in characteristic three, there is only one. Okay. Well, uh, now uh, I am <clears throat> I am going to to see uh, what is uh, 
the symbol of a Hassan media division. So let me uh, let me uh, actually uh, I I said that I I was trying to to use both methods, the blackboard and the Beamer presentation. So perhaps because I am I am um, checking that the time is uh, is okay, so I can I can uh, I can switch to <clears throat> I can switch to the blackboard. Okay. So, uh, and I am going to, uh, to, to talk what is the symbol. Of a Hasse Schmidt derivation. So uh, there is a proposition and uh, it is the following one. If we start with, with a Hasse Schmidt derivation of length, any length, so the first thing is if you take the each component of this has a mean derivation, uh, I already use this result in the case i equal one because I said that this is a derivation. But in general, di is a differential operator of order less or equal than i. Is the first thing, and the second thing is that the symbol, the i symbol of this differential operator, uh, this belongs to the, uh, the I uh, term. Uh, Luis. Yes. Um, uh, somebody said me that um, they cannot hear you well. Is it possible to move the microphone a bit closer to you or something? Ah, excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, if, it, it, if it will not work properly i can i can switch but uh, this is a little strange because uh, excuse me uh, uh, last time it worked properly yeah. why yeah, now it's okay fine. for me now it's okay Sorry. now it's okay for me okay 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 so the symbol this the i symbol of di uh, it belongs to the i uh, component of the associated graded ring. Okay. And what is interesting is uh, it only depends, only depends on D1. So you will start with any has mid derivation and you take the symbols. Uh, of each component, so it only the they only depend on D one on the component uh, of order one. This is something easy to see. So in, in that way, uh, you can you can do the following thing: if you take an integral derivation, let's say a finite integral derivation. Uh, yes means that it is m integrable for any finite m you can define the sigma of delta as a series where you put in the uh, coefficient the m coefficient is the symbol m of D M M T M where T M is an M integral of D one of delta because because delta is finite integrable, you can integrate it for any M, you take any m integral of delta, the symbols do not depend on 
anything else than delta. And so that makes sense. And you obtain a series, okay? This series, this series belongs to the, the, the power series ring with coefficient, the graded ring of differential operator. Okay? And what is interesting is that this series is exponential. is exponential. What means exponential? A series with coefficient in a commutative ring uh, is exponential. If B0 is one, this is clear because the zero term is sigma zero of D0, but D0 is always the, the identity. So this is the identity. And the other, the other property for exponential series is that Bt plus t prime is equal to t times dt prime. So if we are in characteristic zero, these two properties <laughs> completely de uh, determine the UR series in terms of the one term, okay? But if you are not in characteristic zero, you can, you can obtain many, many things, a lot of things with exponential series. But the exponential series with, with respect to some ring, in that case, is with respect to this ring, to the associated graded ring of differential operators. What is interesting is that this series, uh, excuse me, this set is a, is a subset of, of this power series ring, but it is a group for the multiplication. Because if you multiply exponential series, they, uh, they become they, they, uh, <coughs> become exponential series. And, uh, and it is easy to see that the, the, the inverse of an exponential series is also an exponential series because the zero term is one. So this is a unit of this power series ring. So this is a group. This is a group for the product for the product. And you take this group operation as the addition. And there is also uh, a way to act any B of B on any series. You can multiply B of any exponential series simply by replacing T by B T. So this is a substitution. You substitute the variable t by b times t, and you obtain the same properties, okay? So in that way, the exponential series is a b model. The exponential series with respect to a ring b is a b model. So this is a gray-b-a-k a, a model. And what happened is, does that the sigma of delta we defined before actually uh, it began it it belongs to the exponential uh, series uh, with respect to the associated graded ring of differential operators and also this is something uh, interesting is that the map from uh, the map sigma from a finite uh, integral derivation to the module x is a linear. So oh, we have obtained we have obtained a map, a canonical map from finite integrable derivations to the exponential series of uh, with respect to the associated graded ring of differential operators. And now uh, I am not going to enter into 
these details. Now it happened. So I'm going to everything I I am explaining here on the blackboard uh, is contained in uh, in the Beamer presentation. So it happened that by a, a junction property, every time you have a module and you have a linear map from this module to the exponential series of some ring, there is a canonical map from the power divided algebra of this model to the ring. Okay, so in that way, well, uh, this is something that, well, if you don't know, uh, but this is something uh, very well known. The this is. Uh, uh, from the very definition of power divided algebra. Uh, power divided algebra, uh, this is a functor, and it is a join on the left and on the right with two, uh, with two other functors. And in one of the side, I don't remember exactly right now, it's a join on the left or on the right. It is, uh, uh, <laughs> it is uh, a join is it is a and the power divided algebra functor is a join uh, with the exponential functor. The exponential functor goes from commutative rings to modules over this commutative ring. Okay. Uh, or or if you want, uh, this commutative ring can be considered as an al an a algebra. So it goes from a algebras, commutative A algebras to uh, A modules. This is a factor in that. Uh, and so this uh, uh, there is an adjunction. I mean, uh, and so every time you have this uh, map, you obtain this map. And what is uh, interesting is that all these maps, I mean, uh, all these map can be inserted in a commutative diagram, and it is the following. Uh, here, you can take, uh, uh, there is a, another map I will explain uh, in a moment. You take the symmetric algebra of the one differential forms. This is a commutative graded algebra, but it is also a co-algebra. There is a co-product. There is a co-product that comes, any symmetric algebra has a co-product that comes from the diagonal uh, immersion of a module into the direct sum. This, this defines a co-product here. So you can take the graded ring, the, excuse me, the graded dual of this, of this, uh, 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 algebra, and you obtain again a graded commutative algebra. Okay, in the case where we are in 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 characteristic zero, and this is a free module, you obtain the graded ring of a polynomial algebra, and the graded the, the graded dual of a polynomial algebra in characteristic zero is again a polynomial algebra. But in characteristic, in positive characteristic, or uh, in if we are not in characteristic zero, it is no more a, a polynomial algebra. It is a power divided algebra, actually. Okay. So there is a map from here to here, canonical. I will uh, explain uh, right now. But there is also all the derivations, all the derivations, obviously. It is the finite integral derivation are contained here. So there is a natural map here given by the inclusion. And there is a completely general map from 
this is like uh, this is completely general nothing to do with uh, algebra with this is every time you have a, a module and you have a canonical map from the power divided algebra of the dual to the graded dual of the symmetric algebra this is completely general every time you have a module over a ring uh, you can take the dual and there is a map from here to here completely general so and the theorem is that there is a commutative diagram here and what is this map peter this map is uh, well let's say that uh, the expression for the product on this algebra is not completely easy because it is defined as a dual of a coproduct and it uh, it needs uh, the what do you call uh, shuffle this is a shuffle product okay in order to to give an explicit formula here for the product i mean and so the definition of theta is if you take any symbol of a differential operator here let's say of order d and you have to go to the uh, homogeneous d part of this graded algebra so this is the dual of the symmetric power d so you have to apply this to the product of d xi e equal one to d so you take um, generators for this model you take uh, in the in the symmetric product you take the product of this uh, differential and so this, the formula is explicit it's completely explicit what you do is you take the you lift this symbol to any operator of degree of order d you take the commutator you take the commutator and you take the commutator with the last x xd and because p is 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 of order d when you uh, perform all this commutator you obtain a function okay and this function uh, and this formula defines something which is in in the dual of the symmetric product of omega one uh, the d symmetric product of omega one and what is nice is uh, that everything is related and you have a commutative diagram like this okay in general in complete in complete general why this a commutative diagram is interesting so perhaps now i i come back to the presentation because i am pretty sure that i i took more time than i expected Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, this is what I explained, and uh, now we can we can give the the, the definition of what is a, a Hasse-Schmidt smooth algebra. So uh, there is a theorem is that if we assume that the module of derivation is a finitely generated projective a module then uh, these three properties are equivalent the third property is very easy to understand that says that uh, all derivations are integrable okay this is what happened exactly in power series rings and polynomial rings but this is equivalent to the fact that in the in the previous diagram the map the map uh, uh, 
Excuse me. The map here or the map here are an isomorphism. So these are also equivalent to, to, to the fact that all derivations are integrable. Okay. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah. So we say that a K algebra is has a Smith smooth if these properties happen whole. Okay. If uh, the derivations form a finitely generated projective A module and all derivations are integral. So in that case, because of the uh, preceding diagram, uh, what we obtain is that the maps uh, var theta and theta are isomorphism. And so in particular, we obtain uh, an answer to the question I mentioned before, that uh, we have here uh, this isomorphism, uh, which, uh, which is the general version to the, the map that we we have between the symmetric algebra of derivations and the graded, the associated graded ring of differential operator in the case of a smooth uh, algebra in characteristic zero. Okay, so let's say that uh, smooth in the classical sense or formally smooth if, if you want, uh, implies differentially, differentially smooth in the uh, Grothendieck sense. And this implies also uh, has Smith smooth in in the in the sense of the precision definition, uh, and so also in the case uh, in the characteristic zero case. So if we if the rationals are contained in K, so we knew that all derivations are uh, integrable. So that is this property uh, this property here whole automatically, and so. <clears throat> uh, we obtain that uh, this uh, this is uh, el, the only the only property for to be has smith smooth uh, in the characteristic zero case is that the derivations is a finite generated projective model. Okay, actually, uh, well, I cannot enter into any detail, but. Uh, uh, this is related with uh, the relationship between Nakai conjecture and sarisky lipman conjecture. Because uh, what happened is if, uh, if, uh, uh, if we know that uh, <clears throat> uh, the, der the derivations, the, the module of derivations is projective of finite rank, then by this property I, I said, we, we know that the map uh, theta here is an isomorphism. But in that case, that means that all differential operators are generated by derivations because you can, you can lift this property to differential operator. And so this is the reason because uh, we can relate uh, both conjecture, but obviously this is only a comment. Uh, we can relate both conjecture in a very general way, uh, not only for, for, for geometric rings, but this is completely general, but we can only relate both conjecture. We cannot solve this conjecture with, with this uh, result, not at all, okay? Okay, uh, so one, uh, we know uh, uh, that we have some property relating the power divided algebra of derivation with the associated graded ring of differential operators in some cases, let's say in, in smooth cases, in the same, in the same way that uh, in the characteristic zero case, uh, I explained last time that the, differential, the ring of differential operator can be uh, reconstructed as the universal enveloping algebra of the Lee Reinhardt algebra of derivation. So uh, we, have, we have the same question or a similar question in this general setting. Once we have 
this uh, this uh, isomorphism uh, can can we uh, reconstruct the ring of differential operator itself from has mid derivation in some way and so this is the last part of uh, of my talk uh, so uh, the first thing we we need is that uh, we only explain that Hasselschmidt derivations uh, have a group structure. And this is a non-commutative group structure, OK? But derivations uh, have an addition. Uh, remember that at the level of the one term, the group structure of Hasselschmidt derivation corresponds to the addition of derivation. So in some way, this non-commutative uh, group structure in some way is related with the addition of derivation, but derivations are also a, a module. You can multiply functions by derivations and you obtain derivation. And we need a, a, another, an, an additional structure for Hasse's mid derivation. And so this is the action of, of substitution maps. So what is a substitution map? So this is very simple. This is something uh, going from a power series ring with coefficient in A to another power series ring. And uh, this is an, a linear map. And the only thing uh, you, uh, you put is that the, the image of each variable belong, there is no constant term in the, in the phi of SI. It, it belongs to the ideal generated by the variables here. Okay, these are substitution maps. So every time you have a substitution map, you can uh, replace, you can substitute variables in any series and you obtain again uh, a series. Okay, uh, so every time you have a Hasse Smith derivation here, uh, excuse me, this, yes, every time you have a Hasse Smith derivation here, no, there is something strange here. I, I don't understand what happened. Yeah, uh, every time you have a Hasse mid derivation here, and you have a Hasse mid derivation, uh, excuse me, a substitution map. Well, I explained what is a substitution map at the level of the whole power series rings, but you can also uh, take the reduction with respect to some quotients uh, by this uh, by this power series ring. So there is no no difficulty here. So you can you can act any substitution map on D. How? But simply replacing, substituting variable. Remember that asymmetric derivation can be understood as a power series ring. So you simply replace, but you are in non-commutative rings. So uh, you have to replace on the left on the left or on the right. And now the substitution the action of substitution maps is on the left. Okay. So you replace s to the power alpha by phi of s to the power alpha. And you obtain a Hassan mid derivation, a, a nabla variate Hassan mid derivation. This is simply the action of substitution map. This, for instance, there is a very simple example. If you take a very simple substitution maps defined by phi of s equal a s, where A is any element of your ring A. So the action of phi on any has mid derivation is simply replace S by A time S. And so what you obtain is the expression we already used before. Okay, so this is a generalization of, the, of something that we already mentioned before. Okay, but that makes sense for any substitution map. And actually we need this structure in order to, uh, to express uh, and to prove some results. Uh, and we have to, to see this operation, the operation, uh, the, the action of substitution maps, you have to, to see as a something with, with, uh, which uh, replaces the A module structure on, on derivations. Okay, so, uh, what are Hasse-Schmidt modules? Remember that when we explained last time what is a module over a Lie-Reinhardt algebra, 
uh, we explained that, that a module over a Reinhard, Reinhard algebra is, uh, uh, is a, a usual A module. And we put some action of the Lee Reinhardt algebra uh, with some properties. Okay. But if you remember, uh, uh, the, the notion of module over a Lee Reinhardt algebra, in fact, it was a particular case of admissible map, maps from Lee Reinhardt algebra to uh, K algebra. Uh, okay, so here we define what is an Hasse Schmidt structure on a K algebra, R, in general, non commutative K algebra. And this is something that you, you act uh, all Hasse Schmidt derivation for all multivariate Hasse Schmidt derivation on any power series ring with coefficient in this algebra. Uh, and you, you, you collect all these uh, maps and you have to put some um, coherent properties. They have they, they has to be coherent in the sense that you can, you can truncate power series. And so this has to be compatible with truncation. And uh, these maps uh, have to, uh, to satisfy some properties, Leibniz property. In this case, Leibniz property is very simple to see. And you need also that these maps has to be compatible with the action of substitution maps. This plays the role of a linearity. Because remember, the action of substitution maps plays the role of the action of a. So, uh, well, this is a notion, and in particular, what is a left Hasse-Smith module is very simple. Is a A module uh, is an A module M in such a way that the ring of endomorphism of K linear endomorphism of M uh, is endowed with an with a Hasse-Smith structure in the sense uh, here before. Okay. So this is, in some way, it is completely inspired by what happened in the case of Lee Reinhardt algebra, but it is a little more, a little more involved because we need to to have this kind of, uh, if I can say, quantization of of the situation because you have to consider all the power series ring in any uh, set of variables uh, of your ring, and you have to consider all these actions. Okay. Uh, and what happened, and now I, I go because the time is, uh, is almost over. Uh, it is possible to define what is a enveloping algebra in this context. And uh, it is, there exists a such enveloping algebra. And with such enveloping algebra, what happened is that left or right has Smith models becomes left or right modules over this enveloping algebra, okay? In the same way that uh, uh, things uh, happen with uh, Lee Reinhardt algebra. And now uh, it, 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 is, it, it can be proven by universal properties that uh, there is always a, a canonical map from this universal enveloping algebra to the differential operators. And the theorem is uh, first, the, graded, the associated graded ring is commutative. Uh, and the map we, we had before, the map we remember, the map we had before, uh, <clears throat> uh, also happened at the level of the universal enveloping algebra. And the theorem is if A is Hasse Schmidt smooth over K, then the differential uh, operator rings can be recovered as the universal enveloping algebra of Hasse Schmidt derivation. Okay. Uh, well, uh, in order to finish, uh, I will 
uh, I will give you some uh, short list of some results uh, in order to, I don't know if to convince you that uh, these notions are interesting. Uh, actually, I think that all this theory was seriously started by Matsumura and some of uh, his collaborators and Molinelli uh, was uh, one of them. And so this is a result interesting, uh, an interesting result is if you know, if you are in characteristic, in positive characteristic, you know that the, the, the module of derivations over the base field uh, is, can be very big with respect to the dimension, okay? But if you take the integral of derivation, there is always a, a good bound, okay? So this is something interesting for integral of derivation. Actually, there is another property which is, uh, let's say, uh, encouraging, is that uh, integrality is a local property. Uh, finite integrality is a local property, well, let's say for finitely presented K algebras. Okay, so this is, uh, let's say, a, a, a reasonable hypothesis. Uh, and there is also some more recent results by Maripaz Tirado. Uh, well, I am going to, to talk about two of these results. One is that uh, the, remember the sequence I mentioned about uh, the different M integral derivations. Every time you have a, an strict inclusion, you say that there is a leap, okay? And so uh, she proved that there are plane curves over an algebraic closed field of positive characteristic P that have the same semigroup. This is a, let's say, very usual uh, invariant, but they, are, they have different leaps, okay? So leaps are able to distinguish uh, something that the semigroup is not able to do. And there is also an, an interesting result by uh, Maripaz Tirado is that if we are in positive characteristic P, because everything I, I, I mentioned before makes sense for, for any base ring, you don't need a field in order to, uh, to prove uh, everything. But in the geometric case, uh, obviously you have a field, a base field. And so if your base field uh, is of uh, characteristic P positive, then the leaps of A are always power of P. Okay, this is, uh, I think, uh, something, uh, let's say, expected by, but uh, uh, we needed a proof and Maripath uh, found one. And uh, to finish, uh, let's say I'll also a short list of uh, some open questions. Uh, perhaps the most uh, basic uh, open question is to show that uh, under some uh, reasonable hypothesis, in the geometric situation, uh, the set of leaps are finite. In all the examples, obviously, in all the examples we treated, this is true. Uh, but uh, the problem, I have to say, is that the computation with uh, integral derivations are complicated because there is something I didn't, I didn't say before, is if you are trying to prove that some derivation is M integrable, you cannot proceed step by step. It is possible that you obtain something which is uh, M prime integrable, and you are going to use this M prime integral in order to extend it to a, a longer uh, has mid derivation, but this is not possible. You have to change this integral. So that makes computations difficult, uh, but anyway, it is expected uh, that uh, the set of leaps 
of any reasonable geometric K algebra is finite. Uh, another question is the behavior with respect to the completion. What happened? The relationship between the integral of the derivations uh, of A of a local ring, let's say, uh, and the, what happened with the completion. And, uh, and obviously there is a generic uh, question to relate the leaps of, of our K algebra A with other known invariants. There are much more questions, but let's say that uh, I think that in order to have an overview of this theory, I think that this is enough. So uh, thank you, and I, I finish there. Thank you, thank you, Luis. Um, are there any questions for, for Luis? You wanna unmute yourself and say them aloud. Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Um, you have this notion of Hasse Smith smoothness. Uh, do you have an example of something that, the, uh, some algebra that is Hasse Smith smooth, but not smooth? Uh, not really, not really. So you think it may exist or uh, notions should be? Well, uh, I have to say that, uh, well, obviously this is a very natural question, uh, but I, I have to say that uh, I was uh, mainly concerned with the fact that there are many things that do not depend on mm, any finiteness properties, but they depend in, in, in the natural, naturality of constructions. Uh, and this is the, the, this uh, commutative diagram I mentioned before uh, that shows that this is very something general. At the end, we can say that it is easy uh, mm -hmm. because it is general, but, uh, but you are right. Uh, once we know that this uh, uh, works, one has to to be to go deeper and 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 to find. But I have I have no example of of this. Okay, uh, I have no examples of this. There are, there are examples. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, over Z over the integers, you can, you can, you can have some example of uh, plane curves where, where you have singular, singularities, real singularities, but all derivations are integrable. And I have no interpretation of this fact, mm -hmm. what it means, okay? But I think that this is not an example for your what you ask, because I think that in this example it is not uh, uh, it is not has smith smooth. It uh, only there is only one property which which holds, but not the other property. So I have no example on, on this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Another question. Yeah, so I had a question about the characteristic zero side of the um, of the story, actually. So if you have a, a smooth algebra over the complex numbers, then you're saying there's a correspondence between D modules over this and uh, Lee Reinhardt modules for the the derivations for the yes. Lee Reinhardt algebra of derivations. Yes. Is there some sort of um, notion of holonomicity or Bernstein's inequality on, uh, on the Lee Reinhardt well, side? Well. Uh, well, you know, in, in characteristic zero, uh, in the general case of characteristic zero without any smoothness hypo hypothesis, mm -hmm. uh, I know uh, that uh, the universal enveloping algebra of Hass Smith derivations is canonically isomorphic of the, to the universal enveloping algebra of derivation. In the sense of Lee Reinhardt algebra, mm -hmm. uh, without smoothness hypothesis. Okay, mm. so that means that this generalization, uh, it is, we can say, tight. 
because in the characteristic zero case, it gives exactly the same thing, okay? But in the if you don't assume any smoothness hypothesis, you know very well, much better than me, actually, uh, the difficulties. Uh, so that, that there is no, uh, there is nothing new from this from this point of view uh, with respect to these properties. To I I I mean with respect to this. Uh, uh, question uh, you in, in the characteristic zero that is you don't need has smith derivations in characteristic zero the universal enveloping algebra has smith derivation coincides with the universal enveloping algebra of, of derivations in the sense so you you have the the difficulties you you know about the non-smooth case in in this case and that's all there is no nothing new okay this is uh, Actually, I, I, I think that uh, what we can expect is to use uh, this uh, point of view uh, in, in positive characteristic or even in, in equal characteristic, uh, but always under smoothness hypothesis, like in classical D model theory. Okay, but not, I don't, uh, I don't know any, any special application to 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 this case uh, to the non to the to the non i mean to the non smooth case okay okay thanks mm -hmm. another question yeah, i have a question so yeah maybe this question is better for the last talk instead of this talk but actually um so in the last talk, you introduced this concept of Lee Reinhardt algebra, which you said was introduced by Reinhardt. And I am curious to why did he introduce it also to study rings of differential operators or with something, something else in mind? Well, uh, I think that the paper of Reinhardt uh, followed another paper by, uh, uh, this is a very classical, probably by Constant Rothschild, Rosenberg paper, where he they already done some constructions uh, very specific for derivations, and so Reinhardt uh, extended this construction conceptually for Lee Reinhardt algebras. Okay, but uh, actually, I I and and in the in the previous paper they were concerned with differential operators, but not in the paper by Reinhardt. Uh, I think that he he was concerned with uh, with uh, another construction uh, appearing in in the algebra you can construct with the tor and with the ext uh, functors, and uh, it appeared that uh, the Lee Reinhardt algebra point of view was useful to 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 put order on on this cost construction. But I think that he was not motivated by by differential operators, uh, uh, and perhaps this that explains why people doing the model in the seventies and the eighties uh, they use a lot of time the fact that the de model is exactly the same thing as a uh, uh, action of derivation with some rules, and they never mention the uh, Reinhardt uh, and uh, well, let's say not the name, but the fact that this that differential operator are the universal enveloping algebra of derivation. And this is the fact, actually. OK. I think that Reinhardt was not motivated by differential operator, I think. Thank you. Hmm? Any other question? OK. Well, if not, we thank Luis again. OK. Thank you.